Hey, it's Patricia Murphy. It's Friday, casual Friday, and this is Seattle Now. This week, we vaccinated the first healthcare workers against COVID. We've got a long way to go, but this was a good week. Crosscut science reporter Hannah Weinberger and Seattle Times food writer Tan Vin are here to break it down. But first, let's get you caught up. Governor Jay Inslee says the state will receive 40 percent fewer COVID vaccines than expected. He called the news disruptive and frustrating. Washington is not alone. He says it's a problem for every state. Vaccine maker Pfizer says the problem isn't on their end and that production and shipping are on track. The encampment at Cal Anderson Park will be cleared out as planned. Tents have been in place since protests last summer. The sweep was put on hold while a federal judge reviewed a lawsuit to stop it. Last night, he denied the request. City attorneys argued that clearing the park was an urgent response to public safety concerns. Opponents say the sweep violates people's rights and could increase the spread of COVID, according to the CDC. And pull out your rain jacket. It's going to be a wet weekend. Two weather systems are coming through town, packing torrential rains. The first one today will drop a half an inch. But wait, there's more. The National Weather Service warned an atmospheric river of rain is close behind. You better check your storm drains. And if you live near water, beware of flooding. This week, we solved a decade-long argument in my house over what color lights to put on our Christmas tree. I bought LEDs with one click. The color of the lights change, and everyone gets a chance to get a little bit of what they need. It was a small grace in this terrible year, but these days we're counting even the small things, and I'm not one for resolutions, but that seems like a good idea. Crosscut science reporter Hannah Weinberger is here. Hey, Hannah, without saying what it is, are you thinking about a New Year's resolution? Um, yes. All right. All right. Solid. Seattle Times food writer Tan Vin is back. Hey, Tan, did you make a resolution for this new year? I did not. Just taking it one day at a time, Trish. That's all I can do. Yep. I think we're all just trying to get through. Let's talk about the best news of the week, which, of course, is the arrival of the COVID vaccine. Healthcare workers in Seattle started getting shots on Tuesday. Hannah, this is news we have been waiting for. And there's been so much tough reporting on the pandemic, at least for the moment, it must have felt cool to do like positive reporting and exciting news. You know, it's really exciting to see the vaccine out in the world. And I know that other people are also really excited because when you turn on cable news, every minute is just somebody getting vaccinated or a truck on the highway. It's full of vaccines. And I have so many conflicting feelings You know, on the one hand, there's something so wonderful about the world celebrating this incredible scientific achievement to the point where we care about the minute to minute GPS location of a truck carrying vials of vaccine with photographers following them like celebrity paparazzi style. (laughs) It's true. And and we're watching the most important unboxing video that has ever (laughs) been filmed over and over. Like if we stop watching it, if we don't like pinch ourselves, it won't be real. It's, you know, a bomb for people who just want to know we're one step closer to being out of this mess. But this is the first week and there's so (laughs) much that could go wrong. And like, I can't help but wonder what it will feel like six months from now if I haven't gotten the vaccine. And I think back to a day that we treated like a turning point where most of our messaging could have been about how to keep staying safe. And instead we were just like, you know, and the truck is on the highway. It's left the station. Like, move, everybody, move, move. You know. It feels like National Signing Day. I don't know if you guys follow football, but this is a week (laughs) where high school football players, they're in their gym and they make their announcements like, I'm taking my talents to the University of Alabama to play football. It feels like that with this vaccination, doesn't it? Because, I mean, you have like people like just opening the vaccine box and the crowd goes crazy (laughs) and there's flash and there's iPhone going off. It's just... (laughs) I hate to rain at once parade, but like Inslee announced this morning that the allocation for vaccine is going to be re- reduced by 40 percent, unfortunately. Yeah. So, Hannah, gosh, it's going to be longer before we get our vaccine, for all of us get our vaccine. Absolutely. Yeah. And I should say we're at a moment in time here on Thursday recording this show. So (laughs) as of yet, we don't have a whole lot of information um, as of this taping, for sure. Tan, I don't know about you, but I am totally done seeing the B-roll of the TV injections 
right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need some new B-roll for sure. I know. You know, Trish, weirdly, like every day around 7 p.m., my phone pings and it's a Seattle Times coronavirus update where like we yep. find out like, hey, we have a thousand five hundred people who've just been hospitalized. And last night, last it was Wednesday, it was 89 more deaths. And I've gotten to a point where I'm just like, oh, OK, 89 more deaths, whatever. No, we all just been numb to this. It's not been front page news anymore. And I, I feel so bad. I feel so indifferent. I got a feeling everyone else does, too, because it's not news anymore. There's 89 more deaths on Wednesday. That's too bad. We're adjusting to the trauma. We are adjusting to the trauma. And, you know, that is that is a testament to our resilience as humans, right, that we can move forward even when we are faced with a 9-11 death count every single day. But it's also an indicator that we are in a terrible place where we can allow a 9-11 death count every day to go by without being outraged and completely leveled, you know? There are people who are doing really wonderful jobs um, eulogizing the people that we've lost and trying to make each person seem like less of a statistic. And I think that thinking about that, even if it's hard, hopefully will help more people try to keep staying safe. The more you think about all of these people as people who could have been in your community, who you could have impacted, um, helps you stay strong when you wish you could just go outside and hug your friends. Well, we are all going to be masking up for months, but for now, the holidays are here to distract us. Today is the final day of Hanukkah. Christmas is almost here. The Murphys are keeping it pretty chill. Hannah, I know that you went to some extraordinary measures to be with your family this year. <laughs> so I, I have been feeling so much guilt. Um, I've been extremely careful throughout the entire pandemic. Like, I haven't used a public restroom in 10 months, even though we know it's basically safe a to gift. do that at this point. Gift, Hannah. Like, you know, you really wanted to know that. Um, but just like as conservative as one can be. But I have some family members that I hadn't seen since last year who finally said to me, you know, either we're coming to Seattle or you're coming here. And I was like, it seemed safer for me to be the one making that trek. So I've just been like, you know, a ball of anxiety for months leading up to it. And I quarantined for a few weeks, got tested, drove for about a day to where they are without stopping into convenience stores like or anything. Like 24 hours a day? Like a whole day? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like got tested again, quarantined for another week. And I was able to have that holiday experience with my family while being, you know, a ball of anxiety, even though I know you know, intellectually. You did all the things, Hannah. I, I did everything. Like, <laughs> but I felt bad because of all the health messaging about how if you care for your family, you won't see them, even though I know that those messages weren't directed at people taking the steps that I did. Yeah. Hannah, I'm so jealous. My idea of excitement on Christmas Day is like watching Wonder Woman on HBO Max. That, that's not just Christmas. That's like for the entire month. That's like the highlight of my life. <laughs> so good for you for traveling. Hey, I mean, that sounds like a good time. Are you going to cook, Ton? Um, you know what? I usually, on Christmas Day, go dim sum on, with my Jewish ah. friends. And just in case you haven't noticed, I'm not Jewish. But I do hang out with my Jewish friends on Christmas Day. And it'll be weird because, I don't know, maybe I'll do dim sum takeout. Or maybe I'll make a porchetta. I know, Trish, mm -hmm. that during Thanksgiving, I pushed porchetta as the new turkey. That didn't take, so now I'm putting porchetta as a new prime rib for Christmas. <laughs> I don't get a cut from the pork commission or anything, but I just feel like pork belly porchetta is like the way to go. <laughs> it's like best cut of meat. It's cheap. You can't overcook it. Anyway. I'm trying to decide if I want to splurge on some kind of red meat or I want to do like a king crab legs because if i could only have one meal for the rest of my life it would be king crab oh wow and you know <laughs> you know around christmas everyone's doing a butcher's box now it's like the big thing during this christmas it's basically just all the restaurants with excess of meat and the surplus of mm. prime cut of meat they don't know what to do so they're just packaging this as hey christmas send people a Take butcher's it. box yeah that's the way to go <laughs> Before we go, 2020 is almost over. I don't think it's a year we're going to forget anytime soon, but it is the time of year when we look back and reflect on how it went. 
I'm curious what day or event this year was a defining moment for each of you that you'll remember back on when you think of 2020. Oh, man. It was early in the pandemic. It was one of the first Zoom meeting, and I drank too much coffee, so I needed to use the restroom, the bathroom. So I just instinctively just raised my hand during the Zoom meeting and asked for permission to go to the bathroom like a child. <laughs> and, was, and that's when I realized that my world has turned upside down because I didn't know what to do. I mean, what's the protocol on Zoom? If you need to go to the bathroom, do you just leave? And this, you know, video of your empty chair, do you just turn off the video? So anyway, it was, it was pretty embarrassing, but. That's wonderful. <laughs> Hannah, what about you? Oh, man. Um, I have a fun one and a not so fun one, I think. So my not so fun one was in June. I was writing a COVID adjacent story and um, the police brutality protests had just started. So I was the emergency contact for a bunch of people watching their, you know, phone GPS locations on a map relative to like where I knew guns might be. And then all of a sudden I get a call from one of my brothers that a family member had been bitten by a rattlesnake. It was on the way to the hospital. And I was just like, if I can handle this, I can handle anything. Doesn't get much more 2020 than that. Yeah, I was just like, you know, I expect all the crises to happen now. Like, the big one will hit in five minutes. It's fine. I know what I'm doing. Um, and then I think the one that that stuck with me and was more positive, I went to an outdoor dance party with some friends in the middle of this abandoned lot. We wore four layers of clothing and kept, you know, <laughs> 20 feet of distance looked like we were just dancing by ourselves and, you know, stripping off layer after layer when it's like 20 degrees outside and just seeing my friends kind of let loose like that after a year where everyone has been through so much was just really meaningful. That's wonderful. We're going to leave it there. That's all for this week. Thanks again to my guests, Hannah Weinberger. She's the science reporter for CrossCut and Tan Vin, the food reporter at the Seattle Times. Thanks, you two. Thanks, Trish. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Seattle Now. The show is produced by Claire McGrain, Ryan Califf, Caroline Chamberlain Gomez, Sophie Reed, and Jason Pagano. Matt Jorgensen does our music. I'm Patricia Murphy. See you Monday. As this memorable year comes to an end, it's good to know we got through it together. KUOW has been able to bring you programming that broadens your perspective, thanks to our members who step up to support this work. If KUOW has been there for you at some point in the past year, consider making a financial gift to ensure a new year of telling important stories about our community. Use the link in our description to make your gift today. And thanks.